My hope is that by the end of this webinar, you will have a better understanding of how you can begin to identify what is your purpose, how you can begin identifying who you are, and how that fits with finding a career that fits you, and then the next action steps to continue exploring your process for getting there. Dr. Gherkin, do we have any other announcements regarding um, extra credit? Yes, a couple of announcements. At the end of the workshop, be sure to stay to the end, and then when it's over, I will tell you what information to give us and how to do so to make sure that you get the, the extra credit that you've come for. If you are coming for extra credit, I'll give you that information at the end. And also, um, I will also lo load at the end a file that includes all the slides from today's presentation. So be sure to stay to the end and you'll have the opportunity to do both of those things. Thank you. A little bit about me. I am counseling faculty, as I said, here at GCC, and I teach CPD 150 strategies for college success. And I also meet with students one on one regarding personal career and academic concerns. So I graduated with a bachelor's degree in international business and Spanish, and I worked for five years in the financial industry. Then I did a 180 degree turn and attended ASU, obtained a master's degree in counseling, and here I am now. So what happened? I'm sure you know or have heard stories of people doing career changes that are opposite of where they started. This is very relevant to today's topic. So later on, I will share with you what happened and how I got there. So you may already have asked yourself these questions. Why am I here at GCC? What do I hope to get out of this experience? Your answer may be that you wanna do something with your life and college is a way for you to accomplish this. You may already have a career in mind, or maybe you are undecided altogether or have doubts about what you have chosen. Let's take a closer look at some of the emotions that you may be experiencing as you're going through this career exploration process. I'd like you to, we're gonna do a poll right now, and I'd like you to answer as many emotions as you have or have had recently when you think about the career exploration process. And Dr. Uh, Gherkin will share with us what the majority of you have chosen. Okay, I've opened the poll, so go ahead and make your choices. Great, I'm seeing lots of responses. Eighty-eight percent of you have voted, so I'll give you a few seconds to give the rest of you a chance. All right, it looks like everyone who has, just about everyone has, I don't see any more coming in, so I'm going to end the poll. And I'm going to share the results. Now you should be able to see the results and you'll see that it looks to me like the biggest one I'm seeing here is overwhelmed. 23% of you said you have felt recently or are feeling overwhelmed um, about the career exploration process. The next biggest one looks like anxious. 19% of you are saying you're feeling anxious. And then 15% hopeful, that's good, and 12% worried. So. 12% also confused. So it looks like overwhelmed, anxious uh, are the highest ones followed by hopeful. Well, thank you very much for sharing that. And it is very normal to feel this way. Uh, the career exploration process can be very daunting and everyone can have a different reason for experiencing even the same emotion. So take, for, take a moment to think about um, why is it that you're feeling overwhelmed or what's behind that? What are you feeling overwhelmed about? And put some, put some words around that. And just think it's just time for a self-reflection for you just to think about a little bit deeper, dive deeper into it. The anxiety, what's the anxiety about in particular? So we could all have a different reason for feeling anxious. For example, if you're feeling excitement, is it because the career comes with a higher pay and you're anticipating that? Or is it because you will be doing something that you really love to do? If you're feeling worried, what worries you? 
Is it because you aren't quite sure that this career is for you? Or maybe that you might encounter some struggles along the way, perhaps financial struggles, things you will need to overcome to get there. You see, what happens is that rarely do we get in the car without having a destination in mind. We usually have somewhere to go and the car serves the purpose of getting us there. But in life, when we don't know where we're going, we can feel lost and unmotivated and with very good reason. So where do we begin finding out what is our purpose? What direction do we wanna go and why? Let's begin by answering these 10 beautiful questions. And then in a moment, we will go over a framework for career exploration that may help. So prepare your 10 pieces of paper. It can be an index card, 10 index cards, or the size of an index card. If you don't have any paper around you, then improvise. Use your computer. Um, the, the main purpose is to write down your answers somewhere. This is going to be a free write activity. There's going to be 30 seconds per question. You're gonna write only your answer, not the question. One answer per paper. And when you find that there are compounded questions, like several questions in one question, uh, several parts of the same question, you may choose to answer only one of that part or all of it. And then answer honestly, quickly from your heart. Finally, it should be focused on you and not what others expect from you. So are we ready? Let's begin. What's always on your mind? What do you think about a lot? If you were on the computer or the internet, what would you spend your time reading or searching for the most? Question number two, what positive things do people say about you? What do people thank you for the most? Question number three, who inspires you? Who would you most like to be like? Who are your heroes, your role models? Question number four, what do you help with that seems natural or easy for you? What do people come to you for? When you're at your best, what does it look like? Question number five, what are you amazing at doing? It can be work-related or life-related. What are you great at? What do you do particularly well?
Question number six. When do you feel energized, passionate, free, incredibly useful, excited, and or inspired? Question number seven, who do you want to help? Who would you like to inspire? Whose lives would you like to change? Question number eight, if you had a chance to be known for something special or unique, what would it be? How do you feel you can contribute to society? Question number nine, how would you like to be seen, recognized, acknowledged, awarded, praised now and or in the future? What's the legacy you want to leave behind? If you were to die tomorrow, what would you want people to say about you? And the final question, question number 10. This is a good one. What is your biggest fear? What is that thing that scares you the most? Now I invite you to take a minute and organize your responses in front of you. Put them in front of you, look for connections, gather your answers that are similar and put them next to each other. Rearrange the patterns that you see. We are ready now for the next step, which is writing down your findings. I invite you to do a quick reflection on what patterns you see in your responses. What resonated the most with you? What surprised you? What did you already know about yourself? What's important to you? So just some things to think about to share in the chat with others. Please take a, a couple of minutes to write in the chat what, what patterns you saw, what was most important. And Dr. Uh, Gherkin will start reading your responses. Okay, focusing on school is most important at the moment. Another response, family, success, future. Helping people, listening to people, inspiring people. 
Okay, so your question on extra credit, and I'll get to that at the end of the workshop. I found work and how other people see me was very important now and also in my future. Family and being a good role model for others. Being determined to succeed to help others and family. All of my answers interconnected with each other. I realized that though I know what I love, I do not realize, I did not realize how important it was to me. Listening, helping others, taking the time to understand others. Mostly trying to be a better person and helping other people, even in small ways. Wanting to see my, inter my independent projects seen through, but knowing they may never be finished or fully realized due to the stress of seeing the same thing every day or maybe not having the technical skill to make it something special. The most important thing to me is my family and my mental health. Focusing in school and my craft in my desired potential career. Want to be seen as a determined person. I fear failure, that I may never reach my potential. I'm a brilliant strategist, but I don't know where to apply it. So I don't see any more coming in, but if you if you want to keep adding, I've got another minute or so. Um, helping others and finding my creative outlet. I'm scared of failing and falling behind. Well, I'm waiting to see if there's any final uh, responses here. A couple of patterns that I saw were that a lot of people mentioned family and helping others. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I have. Several people mentioned fear as well. Yes, that's very good. Very, very good. To express these things out loud to yourself and to others. Your answers to these questions are the starting point for bringing to the forefront what is important to you. And so I heard a lot of family, like you said as well, and succeeding and, you know, things like that that are values. I also heard interests, a lot of interests um, and passions and um, craft that you're perfecting. I heard that. And your strengths, strengths of listening, caring for others. And then most importantly, the fears. So this one, we are going to talk about for just a minute. What scares you the most? When you think about a career, what are you most afraid of? This one is very important uh, because our fears can hold us back from going forward. So I'm going to do another poll, and this one is uh, zeroes in on, narrows down on what is the fear that you feel the most in the career exploration process? Okay, I've launched the poll. You should see it now. You should be able to make your choices, so go ahead and get started. What are you most afraid of? Failure, letting others down, not being good enough being disappointed in yourself, the unknown, not being perfect. Okay, we've got 82% of you who've answered, and I'll give you a few more seconds if anybody else would like to respond or make a choice. This is anonymous, if, as, as you can tell. Okay, I'm not seeing any other responses coming in, so I'm going to end the poll and share the results with all of you. Here's what I'm seeing on the results. The biggest one is Fear of failure, 35%. Next biggest one is a tie between the unknown and not being good enough. Those are at 22%. And 
and then letting others down at 17 percent yes yes this is very good expressing our fears is important you see our fears can hold us back and somehow when we talk about them as we are doing right now when we acknowledge them we can find ways to overcome them and build self-confidence fear kills more dreams than failure ever will i'm going to say that one more time fear can kill more dreams than failure ever will and so the first step is being aware of what they are and expressing it to yourself and then to others who can be supportive of you so that's very important finding others who can be supportive of you when you're expressing these feelings of fear because it's very you, you put yourself in a very vulnerable you know situation when you express your fears so it's important that whoever you express them to will be supportive of that and having the courage to pursue your dreams by taking small, actionable steps. So not big, ginormous, gigantic, 180 degree big turns, but small, actionable steps that will get you where you want to go. So we're going to talk more about these steps later. Let us continue on this path of how we learn more about ourselves, because that's the key. We started with these 10 beautiful questions, questions which lead us into aspects about ourselves. And these aspects you can actually put into a framework. So Back in 1980, Donald Super um, created this framework called the self-concept theory and its components. The premise is, is that the self-concept changes over time. These, these five areas that we're gonna talk about. And it changes through experience and it is lifelong. And it's about knowing oneself, which is a prerequisite for the optimal career choice. That's what the framework stands on. In other words, it is about finding a career that is aligned with who you are. So what are these building blocks of the self-concept? Uh, the, these are the five. We tend to always shorten it. Me, we, meaning us counseling faculty, tend to shorten it, and we call them the VIPs. But the VIPs stands for values, interest, personality, strengths, and skills. And that comprises the self-concept. Your interests are things that you like, what you're passionate about, what you spend hours reading about or searching the internet on, um, your craft, you know, somebody mentioned a craft, um, personality, you know, which, which is comprised of unique patterns of like your mental, emotional, physical, and behavioral characteristics. Um, and then your strengths, what are you naturally good at? What gives you energy and joy? Your skills and abilities, and that is what college is for. It's the training that you will be receiving to expand on these skills and abilities that you already have. So abbreviated, these five areas is what we call the VIPs. So if you hear me later on um, talking about your VIPs, this is what I'm talking about, these five areas of you. And so the idea is to start from the inside out, know thyself first. Using the self-concept theory, how can you know yourself better in practical ways? How can you look into these five areas and discover and go and go further. Number one is we do have some free uh, assessments that assess your VIPs, your values, your interests, personality, and strengths and skills again. And we also have some professional assessments that you do pay a fee for. Um, they tend to be more reliable and have more validity and they're available to you as well through the counseling department. And number two is something that you need to be aware of is your interests and to continue to develop them while you're in school. Pay attention to what you like to learn about uh, in your classes. What do you gravitate towards? And then take elective, take an elective class um, that is an area of interest that you may have. And three is building upon your skills especially in college, in areas that, that challenge you, in areas where you can expand, in areas where you can grow, because you don't know what this may lead to. And sometimes we, we, we because this has happened to me as well, we, we tend to um, not look into areas that are not our strengths and um, because it's too challenging or we think it doesn't go with us, but sometimes those can lead to areas of strengths, strengths that you might discover that you never even knew you had before. 
So that's what I mean by building skills. And somebody had mentioned also technical skills. So this is the time in college, especially to take those classes that are going to help you succeed in the career, like a computer class or a communication class and things like that. Uh, number four are extracurricular activities. These types of activities allow you to be around others who inspire you, who have some of the same interests, um, who, um, who you can learn from. So student clubs or study groups, creating your own. These, these are opportunities that you have in college. And five is seeking feedback. So what do others see that are your talents? What do others see that you're naturally good at? What do others think that you are energized by or excited by? Sometimes others can see potential in us even before we do. Okay, so let's say that now you have taken time to look inward and you, you've gone through all these things, you've taken these assessments, you're taking these wonderful classes, you're developing your interests, your skills, your aptitudes. The next step is researching the world of work. Because you have taken time to take an inventory of your self-concept or your VIPs, now you will, seek, you will see work and careers in a very different way. What do I mean by this? Well, when you know that you are looking for what when you know what you are looking for, it is much easier to find it and to narrow, narrow it down to the fields and careers that match you the most. So like, let's say that you narrowed it down to one or two careers. Now it's to take a step, a closer look and do some research. You begin with a set of questions, right? When you're looking for uh, careers, questions that you develop beforehand, questions like, what does a day in the life of blank look like? Questions like, what do I actually will be doing on an, you know, in the everyday life? What, what are the pros and the cons of this career? Um, what are the strengths and abilities or skills that I need for this career? What is the salary? You know, those kinds of questions that you can build ahead of time. And then you can make comparisons between one career and another to see how they compare. And then finally, the most important career, the most important question is, how does this career fit my VIPs, my values, my interests, my personality, my strengths, my skills? We're gonna take a pause right now because with new learning comes questions, new questions. So I'm gonna ask you, what are your questions so far? What's on your mind? Go ahead and type those in the chat and I'll read them to Ms. Barajas. I see a comment that says I've done many of these assessments. I don't see a question there, but I do see a comment. Oh, still this typing, it looks like. Okay. Yes, these assessments are a starting point. They're, they're, they're a good starting point to get the conversation started. And they can also change over time, especially the values and the interests they have for me. Yes, I would say they have for me as well. I've taken lots of career assessments over a period of many years from when I was a student and then when I was changing careers as a working adult and they definitely changed. So are we ready to continue or do we have more questions at this okay. point? Here's some questions. Um, how to navigate frustrating aspects that come with going to school for your career, but there's so many issues with getting into programs, being waitlisted, not getting into the right class right away, etc. 
Yeah, seeking help um, is exactly what you're doing right now. Seeking, it is never too early and never too late to seek help in navigating this process. It can be very confusing and you're absolutely right. Especially there are some programs that have a long wait, you know, a long wait for you to get into it. And so what do you do in the meantime? So, uh, and my answer to that would be that uh, what you're doing is coming to this workshop. And then another thing I would suggest is to reach out to uh, counseling faculty and have someone to bounce off ideas with to see what do I do next? What is the next step here? So I'm counseling faculty. You could meet with me. Uh, we're meeting online at the moment. Ms. Barajas is counseling faculty and there are several others. So you can just call the number at the end of the presentation or send an email to the email address at the end of the presentation. And either way, you can make an appointment to see one of us counseling faculty to help you with navigating all those kinds of obstacles to your success. Okay, here's another question. Do you have any advice on what to look for in a career? Advice on what to look for in a career? Well, certainly, um, the advice that I have is finding a career that matches your VIPs. So that would depend on what is important to you. It would depend on the characteristics of your personality, your strengths, your, um, your interests, and um, that's where I would start. In addition to that, there is always that question that is looming in the background. How will I know if I will like this career in the end? How will I know if the shoe will fit? Am I right? You still have that lingering question? So let's move on to the next slide and let's talk about that. I've got several other questions, so I'd like to come back to the questions. Sure, sure. At we'll come point. back to those. Okay. We'll come back to those. So will the shoe fit? How do I know? Um, you have taken the time to look inward. You have done an inventory of yourself at this point, And you have also looked outward and um, research the careers and see how 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 they how these careers fit with your VIPs. You've done all of that work and you're still on the step of what concrete evidence do I have that I'm actually going to like the end of the road <laughs> or when I'm finally in the career? Will this really match me? Because sometimes let's just be honest here, the theory and the practice, they they tend to be different, right? What you are actually learning in class and then what actually is happening in the world of work could be a little slight, you know, different or very different. So here are some things that you can do. Um, and this is one of the most important ones, by the way. Some students overlook this because it does require um, a little bit more work and effort on your part to go outside of yourself, to look for these kinds of things. And it's especially hard if you're shy. But I'm telling you, this is, this is golden right here. And this is what's really going to help you. Number one is informational interviews. Take the time to go interview a professional in the field that you want to be in. And you want to ask, you know, four simple questions. What is your day? What is the day in your life look like? So you want to know, you know, concretely, what does it look like? Does it vary? Is it the same? What's it like? You know, what, um, what do you like about it? And the opposite of that question, what don't you like about it? And then finally, the fourth question, what advice would you give to somebody like me who is interested in this field? So that's basically the four questions that, that you could ask in an informational interview. It could be 15 minutes. And of course, always remember to thank them at the end and send them a thank you note. Show your appreciation because that might lead into the second point, which is a job shadow. And a job shadow is the time for you to spend a day with that professional. Maybe then, if you make a good connection, you can ask, can I spend a day shadowing you to see what it's like? And this, of course, is really good. And then finally, an internship. An internship allows you to get really close to the action and see what it's really like. Um, the fourth thing that I have is seeking out mentors. The seeking out mentors is very important because when you find somebody in the field that you want to do and they they actually want to be your mentor, I mean, it's 
how can, it, it can't get any better than that. They're going to guide you. They're going to give you uh, advice. They're going to help you so you don't fall into any any traps. You know, they're going to they're going to share their networking with you. They're networking, and that you know, friends that they know or colleagues that they know that are in the same field and connect you to them. So these are the four golden opportunities that you can do to really find out if the shoe will fit. Okay, you ready for a couple more questions? Sure. Okay. My mom doesn't believe I can be a psychologist because I am shy. Then I start to double doubt myself. Any advice? Yes, <laughs> because it's just like me. I was very, very shy in high school. In fact, um, first I wanted to do something in math um, and statistics. And then I moved on to business because it was very practical. And, um, and I was very, very shy. So my advice to you is exactly what I told you, is to take classes like a communications class, um, a class where um, you, can, you can be supported and the teacher can help you or the instructor professor can help you expand yourself you know get yourself in in a situation where you can test out those fears that you have um, and you can grow and develop and overcome um, so for me and this brings me out to the question what do you what do you want your life to look like because this is if we're zooming out all of this information that we're taking in right now leads to this question. What do you want your life to look like? And, you know, sometimes we don't know. And we won't know until we get more experience. So the answer for you is through the experience of putting yourself in situations where you can grow is how you will build into, is this career really for me? Right? So let's talk about that for a minute. I'm going to share with you what happened um, what happened with me so after college I started working in the financial industry like I said five years into it um, I went into I wanted to go to graduate school and get an MBA in international management and then my plans were that upon graduation I would land a position with a multinational corporation and then work my way up you know, that was that what that is what I was thinking about. But the reality is, is that I reflected on my strengths and it just really did not completely adhere to my VIPs, my values, my interests, my personality, my strengths. So like the student that just mentioned that she's thinking of psychology, I was thinking a lot about helping others, you know, and I, I really wanted to. And I was a little shy, too. But then I came upon a book called I Could Do Anything if I only knew what it was. And then it touched upon many of the strategies that we covered in this webinar. I took the time to look inward and it helped me to discover that I really do enjoy helping others. Was it daunting? Was it scary? Did I have to overcome my shyness? <laughs> yes, yes to all of that. And I'm here to tell you that once you get to the first step, once you take that first step, because the first step is always the hardest, but once you take that first step, whether you're starting, just starting, or whether you're changing your path, it does get easier and it will be okay. Because quite frankly, our values can change over time. Our interests can change over time and we can discover and develop new strengths and abilities. That's the way it is. So this is a never ending process. Any other questions? Yes, there are four questions and some are pretty in-depth, but uh, we'll do as many as we can. And then I would highly encourage, if we don't get to all of them, really strongly encourage you all to make an appointment with Ms. Barajas or me or one of the other counselors. We, we can go really in-depth on these, on these deeper questions in a, in a counseling session online or over the phone until we get back to being in person. Um, okay, next question was, uh, any advice on how to get back to that career field after not being involved for a few years? Advice in getting in a career field. So it sounds like you took a pause. You were doing something that maybe you enjoyed and you want to come back to it. That's what I'm hearing. That's, That's what, what I'm it hearing. Looks like. 
That's what I'm hearing the question. The, yes, the question is coming back to it. You know, opening the doors again into something can be, uh, especially after you've let it go for, for some time, is uh, can be intimidating, right? Somebody has to open a door for you or a window or something. Um, networking has always been the best advice that I've ever received myself. And actually, I'm going to give you a resource um, it's called what color is your parachute and it's in the next slide by the way I'm gonna go over it what is what is what color is your parachute by Richard Bowles that that book was also a book that I that, that helped me a lot it comes out every year they have a new edition every year but the point is is that Richard in that book makes um, gives really really good tips on how to get back into a career and it, it does have to do with networking and it has to do with getting through the back door because everybody wants to go through the front door Am I right? Like we answer uh, when we want to get into a job, what do we do? We go on the internet job search sites and we look for job openings and then we apply to them. We send our resume, cover letter, et cetera. But everybody is doing that. So it's like everybody is competing for a percentage of the job openings. And getting through the back door is a different strategy. It's like using networking to find out which companies you want to work in, who you want to work, you know, um, who works in that company that you can talk to, and sending your resume and your cover letter when there are no opening, when there are no openings. And you might think, well, that is kind of far off, but you know what? It does work. I've done it, and <laughs> and it it does work. So there are other amazing tips in that book that I highly recommend and you'll see it in the next page. And I think we're running out of time. So let's just take one more question. Okay. How do you stay patient and on track when your desired career is difficult to be successful in? How do you stay patient? The patience and on track and on track. So it sounds like how do I persevere? How, how do I stay committed to my goals and dreams? when it is difficult sounds like motivation right like an inner motivation that you're drawing from an inner motivation of your goals and dreams to keep on track this is where visualization really helps when you visualize when you take time to visualize how you want to see yourself 10 years from now why are you doing this what's the purpose why are you spending all this time and effort and energy hours upon hours studying this material? What are the benefits that you're going to receive? Keeping those, keeping, keeping your dreams, keeping your dreams up in front and center as a tool to keep you motivated. And then I have to tell you, going back to the mentor thing, seek out a mentor, a mentor in that field. Because when you talk to a mentor, the mentor will guide you, especially in these, in these uh, rough spots, having someone to talk to. Okay, well, uh, the last two questions were Bradley and Madeline, and they're very in-depth, personalized questions, and I think those could really best be answered with a one-on-one -on -one conversation with one of us counseling faculty. So I'd really highly encourage you, Bradley and, and Madeline, to use the, the email or the phone that, that is about to be given to you and contact us, our scheduling staff, and make an appointment to meet with one of us. Yes, that is, that is, thank you. Thank you, that is exactly what I was gonna say. Continue the conversation. Continue the conversation that we started today with your friends, with your family, with others, with your mentor. Make an appointment to come see a counselor. Take the free assessments. Take the professional assessments if you like. And by the way, uh, Dr. David Gherkin is uh, continuing this conversation with a webinar that he's going to do on April 3rd. And it's going to be called Choosing a Career, How to Get Started. And it's a the, the link to that webinar is on our counseling um, workshops. Um, if you put in GCC homepage and then you put in in the quick links counseling workshops, you'll, you'll find it. And he's going to be 
showing you a more in-depth look into the free assessments that you can find uh, online for your VIPs, for your values, interests, personality, skills, and strengths. I'd also like to encourage you to, you know, if you have a question about um, if you want to continue exploring more um, about what, about the strategies that we've learned here, to take a course. We have CPD 150, which is a course that I teach, and we take three weeks to explore career presentation, career exploration. And the beauty of that course is that we also take an in-depth look into seven superpowers. I call them superpowers because they are. <laughs> um, and um, these are things that you can start developing inside to help you be successful in college and in life. And then we have a career exploration course that's focused on career exploration called CPD 150 AC. Um, the resources that I mentioned or earlier, uh, what color is your parachute? Parachute by Richard Bowles or right here. I also would like to encourage you to read Do What You Are, which is on, based on personality. And then the last one is Dale Johnson, the Dream Dean. That is whom I, who shared with me the, the 10 beautiful questions that you, that you did today. And he has a ton of information about creating a life of purpose. Okay, so I hope this webinar has helped you in the career exploration process. We learned about purpose. We learned about the importance of knowing thyself. We learned how to find careers that fit you and then some actionable steps that you can take. It is a lot, but from what you have learned, what is one takeaway from this webinar? Okay, so one takeaway that you'll take with you on this webinar and what is one actionable step you will do next? Please answer in the chat. First one I see is work hard, keep the conversation going and find a mentor. Another one is I'll check out those books and the next webinar. And another one is I'll continue soul searching. My takeaway is that I need to visualize my goals to stay on track. I will also be finding a mentor, pick extracurriculars to find my interests and get a job shadow to see if I practically like my major and not just the idea of it. To make sure you find a career that surrounds your interests, take one of the assessments. Stay focused. Finding a mentor taking a CPD 150 AC class. Find a mentor, create a visual, and keep pushing and working hard. I'll be exploring more of my interests that I have that I've kind of I've pushed to the side in the past by looking for experiences in them and testing them out narrowing the field and find a back door to get into the field I want. I'm going to find books, mentor, and see if my path is correct for me. Oh, those are all great. Those are all great actionable steps. Take action and start today. Networking is another one. Another one that just came networking. up is networking. Mm -hmm. um, they could use to learn and develop. Uh, continue to build relationships with others in my desired field yes yes very good very good all of those the important thing is to start right to take the next action so here are the upcoming workshops that we have i've already mentioned the uh, career um, webinar that will be presented by dr david gherkin who is with us today and that is on April 13th, on Tuesday. Next week, we have the need for connection. And this webinar, you, they will look at the latest psychological literature on the importance of high quality connections, and then strategies for fostering and sustaining connection. And then the week after that is test anxiety. And in test anxiety, you will explore the causes for anxiety, examine techniques for test taking, and you will also learn how to reduce test anxiety on all types of learning conditions, especially online, now that we're online. 
So this pretty much concludes the webinar. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us. I wish you all the best in your career exploration. And I want to say, you know, keep, keep learning, keep sharing, keep going. And um, Dr. Gherkin is going to send you the PDF slides of this webinar so that you have that. And also a Google form. Is that right, Dr. Gherkin, where you no, will fill I'm, out? What I'm going to do right now is just ask you, tell you what to put, what to write in the chat if you are here for extra credit so that we can get that information to your professors. Here's what we need to give you credit for the extra credit. Put your name, your professor's name, and the class or program that you're getting extra credit in. So for example, my name as a student would be David Gherkin, my professor, Professor Bird from math, and I'm in math 150, for example, okay? Um, or it could be in the honors or ACE or Excel or one of those other programs that may be giving me extra credit. So that's what you need to put. Just go ahead and write that in the chat now. And uh, we'll make sure we get that information to your instructor. And as you're doing that, I will upload the PowerPoint file from today's presentation. And we'll stay online here until noon, until 12 o'clock, about another five or six minutes. And then you'll be able to have time to download that file if you want to keep these slides. And you may want to because there's lots of good resources, the books, the links to counseling and so forth. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all for joining us one more time. I wish you all the best in your career exploration. Feel free to make an appointment to come see one of the counseling faculty. Send an email to counseling at gccaz.edu. Thank you, Dr. Gherkin. Thank you. And thank you all for your, your engagement. You were all very engaged in the chat and had some great conversations. Okay, I've uploaded that file to the uh, slide. You should be able to see it. Career Exploration Workshop. It's a uh, PDF file. You should be able to download that before we log off at noon. And I'm getting all your extra credit information, so thank you. We'll make sure to get that to your instructors. Okay, someone else is saying that they're asking them to do something else to get their extra credit. So if you've got other instructions to take a selfie of yourself attending and send that as proof, whatever they've asked for, go ahead and send that. But if they haven't asked for something in particular, just put your name, professor's name, and class or program. There's no Google form to fill out. At least not from us, there may be from your professor who's giving the extra credit.